You've tuned in to Timber and Tara. Thanks for joining me. This, I think, is episode number seven on this uh, build of a road in a field. So uh, the last episode, how we left things, I just put this culvert in. Um, I had a, little, had a little bit of reservations about I put it in higher than I'd like. I just sort of set it so the outfeed side was resting on the surface of the grass. Um, the infeed side, because of the slope, I had to dig in, which is fine. I would do that anyhow. Uh, dig in below the surface. But what it did do is it caused, I don't know if, how well it'll show on camera, is it um, caused the level here to go up just a little bit to get over the culvert and then down. So I, I brought in a lot of fill here, I think um, five or six uh, trailer loads, which is probably about two, maybe two and a half, uh, ten wheelers. Uh, 14 to 15 yards each worth of material and I have a lot more to add there because you can see how the the slope goes down after the culvert So that was really my reservation is I have a lot of fill that I still have to put in there um, I've used all the easily accessible fill that I have from the ditch I do have more in front of the dozer that uh, I will probably end up taking but um, If I didn't need to take any I wouldn't but I do have a plan so my plan now is because this is relatively higher than it needs to be. So from the end of the bulldozer here, it slopes that way, it's, but it's very close to being level. I don't think there's more than, say, a quarter or half inch per foot of drop between here and there, but it does slope that way a little bit. Somewhere around this curve is where the peak is. Um, but I, uh, what I want to do now is actually scrape this down so that, say, between here where I'm standing and the culvert is sort of make a um, more of a gradual slope down to where the culvert is. I think there's a lot of material that I will remove to do that because this here, the corner, is, is higher than it needs to be. It's not, the, it's, it's not a big deal. I could leave it the way it is, but it works out well to be a source of fill. The only downside to that is I'll have to dig the ditch around this corner a bit deeper because when I grade this out I'm sure I'm gonna go uh, below the level of the existing ditch so it just means the ditch will look more like this one as far as the slope from the existing bank than right there which right now is a very gentle slope into the ditch so I can deal with that uh, but I'm not going to deal with that now. There's all kinds of options to how to make the transition from the ditch into the existing field. Uh, so I'm not worried about doing that, and I don't need to do that today. So let's push some dirt. So I think that went fairly well. I've scraped down basically as far as I think I need to or want to from where I started walking uh, to where the culvert is. But uh, now, as I suggested earlier, I'm going to have to um, redig my ditch, which is fine. Uh, I just need to make sure that I maintain uh, the right pitch. I don't mind. I don't care whether the water flows this way or that way, but <laughs> somewhere in the middle, I just don't want puddles. But, uh, so I think I'm good on this side of the culvert as far as not having a dip down and back up again just to go over it. But um, obviously I will need a lot more material in here, so.
So I think this looks pretty good for now. It seems to be a pretty flat descend there to the level of the culverts. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is, because this road is basically at the level that I want, so now there's no reason not to spread this topsoil back out and uh, smooth that out along the edge of the road. So it's roughly graded out. I think it looks pretty good. Actually, it was my first time trying to spread saw to this dozer. Um, it's a bit of a challenge because you get clumps, but boy, compared to that 6,000 pound Case 310 that I had for like 20 years, 
this is this is a dream it's amazing what a little bit of weight will do to break up those clumps and back drag and not have the the blade sort of bounce up and down as it goes over the clumps so that'll do it for today probably catch up again to finish this video up here in a day or two see you soon well here we are experiencing some real rain which hasn't been hard to come by this summer but right where i'm standing is the dividing line not the continental divide but just the road divide so everything there is going to the road this is the beginning of that curve and everything from this way down is going into the culvert which we'll take a look at I'm a bit leery of actually walking on the road because it's like ice. I'll fall on my backside, I'll get all muddy, and if I do not fall, my feet will begin to weigh about 30 pounds each because the mud just sticks to boots like you would not believe. So let's make our way to the culvert and see what's happening. Wouldn't you know it, there is some water going through. All right, I'm gonna brave it. <clears throat> so there's a puddle there, which when I build the road up and level off the topsoil, that will be gone. And the water coming out just running down the hillside into the swamp. So let's take a look uh, more towards the road where the majority of this uh, field runoff is going. In fact, I see a little waterfall coming off and a little opening uh, in the pile or the windrow of topsoil that I made. So a little breach there between the the windrows of topsoil and there's a lot of runoff coming off here. All heading downhill from the beginning of the curve, right there. I feel my feet getting heavier. Well, this is basically what the ditch will look like. It'll be more refined and it'll be grass there to the right hand side eventually but for now it's just staying off the road which is good That is more rain than I was hoping for today. Just under an inch, which makes sense because any little bit of rain that we had been getting, you know, like a shower here and there was maybe an eighth of an inch. It was basically all soaking into the ground. There wasn't any runoff, but with the amount of runoff, it makes sense we get an inch. So I don't know how long it'll take before I'm able to work in the dirt again, but this has sort of been the story of the summer. So we've had at least five days, maybe going on six here of dry weather. For the most part, things have dried out nicely. I still, still have perpetual sources of water coming from somewhere, perhaps just on the back side of that uh, row of topsoil. Uh, but for today, uh, I want to finish this area and get it to the final grade. I have a little bit of dirt I'm going to steal from here. Uh, I want to uh, sort of dress up this uh, corner where the, uh, the ditch from the road meets the ditch from my road or driveway and uh, neaten up this. I'll probably put some, uh, some fabric down here, uh, make this look a little bit prettier. Uh, but primarily to steal some dirt that I'll transport with my trailer uh, to the far end just beyond that culvert that we put in. So I'm going to do that with the excavator, um, it's just a lot easier digging, 
Plus, I'm going to have to use the excavator to fill up the trailer anyhow, so there's no sense really bringing the dozer over here for that. So I'm just sort of eyeball uh, a little bit of a hump here to try to take out and make it more flat. Uh, I don't care if it's concave or convex as long as it's constantly pitching that way and I don't create any puddles. So hopefully you can see the sort of the change in grade right now the the shelf uh, from here down to there is probably about a foot or so so I uh, sort of cleaned out the ditch a little bit um, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to start my rock lined portion of it but a lot of this all this uh, gabion or riprap uh, eight inch crushed rock whatever you'd like to call it I uh, was put in there by the town for the ditch, so I'm going to leave as much as I can of that. Probably somewhere around here, I'll put my fabric down and um, I'll, probably some handwork involved as well, and then line that with the natural stone uh, going into the culvert.
So this load here I wanted to dump only because there's a bit of a drop off here. I do have enough topsoil, but I don't want to waste that topsoil just filling in that um, that drop off because this is going to be relatively smooth from the road surface to the field surface. So uh, I'm going to dump this here, spread it out here before I spread the topsoil on top of it. Um, once I finish the elevation of the road, I'll probably put a couple more um, loads here along the road as well for the same purpose. But for now, let's make our way back around, fill it up again. So it may not be obvious, but these big chunks that I'm putting in are chunks of clay. Uh, they're not raw. Any of the large rocks that are easy to separate, I'll take out. So we'll use them for the entrance there and at least part of that ditch along the road. So the road here is still soft even after a month or so. Relatively dry weather. I mean, we've had some rainstorms here and there, but nothing like it was earlier this summer. Uh, but it's still you know, squishing down two or three inches in some areas. I'm guessing at uh, this part here where I've added a fair amount of fill, I didn't compact it, I didn't do lifts or anything like that, but it should firm up probably over the winter. I'm in no hurry for this, so I have that time. Uh, but it's wet here along where the, the ditch, the water drains, is constantly being fed moisture, so it's quite soft. Uh, putting my new dump trailer tires to the test, I upsized them. Uh, from the original equipment from uh, 15 inch nine basically nine inch fifth, uh, nine inch wide 15 inch diameter tires to 16 inch diameter tires 12.5 uh, I'm sorry the old ones were 11 so 11 to 12.5 is upside down uh, and I also increased the weight rating. The weight rating wasn't so much of a deal, but I did want the, the flotation because of stuff like this, particularly in the woods. Uh, if we get to it this fall, I hope to. There's some uh, fill I really need to put in some of my woods roads, but that's really going to put the flotation tires to the test. In the meantime, let's dump this load.
I think the wheel you were not watching actually sunk in here a bit more <laughs> to my knee. So that's over a foot of uh, it sunk in there to the softer road base. So I'll probably just have to find new spots every time I go so I'm not making that uh, ditch deeper and deeper. Anyhow, it's uh, much of the same, so we'll just continue working and uh, we'll catch up to you with the exciting stuff.
that first cut uh, or shelf whatever you might want to call it is done uh, so I'm just gonna finish up this is within either easy reach of the uh, the bucket so I'm gonna move the excavator up here be a bit easier to load with the trailer just a little bit lower than the ground that I'm digging Well, I abandoned trying to go from this side to that side um, for a couple of reasons. It works out better just to go back to where I started and come back this way. Uh, one is the trailer's heading in the right direction, so I'm digging behind the trailer, not in front of it, which would put me right next to the tractor. Uh, but this last load for this particular shelf before I start loading up the next one is actually going to go to the pond. Uh, where we had a little bit of a breach on the back side of the dam uh, for the flooding that we had here in Vermont in July. Um, I actually showed that in a beaver video, which is a video or two back. I'll try to put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, beaver dam. So let's go deliver this into the woods. So this uh, should not take the entire trailer load. I do want to put it underneath this fabric rather than bury the fabric. Best I can. So we'll dump what we need to. And the rest of it that I don't dump, I have a perfect spot in that road there up there to the left. I guess it really wouldn't have mattered, would it? Might have been better off just burying that fabric. Anyhow, I think that little bit's going to be enough.
So that's perfect. There's uh, several places in this little cul-de-sac road that I made last winter or last fall uh, that could use several more loads of this to make it. It's plenty passable, but to make it more passable, a bit more level. Here, this is sort of junk material on top. Uh, in wet weather, it gets really soupy. So lifting it up uh, further around the surroundings, I think will be helpful. All right, let's go back to the road. I didn't uh, keep accurate count of how many loads. I'm thinking it's seven or eight. Uh, I did uh, remeasure my trailer, so because I'm loading it as literally as full as I can, <clears throat> stuff spills out the side, and it uh, works out to be five and a half yards, including that little pyramid on top there. But before I bring any more over here. I want to make sure I don't have too much, so I'm going to spread this out. I'm thinking this may be enough to bring it to the end of where I stripped the topsoil. So that'll be the end of my immediate dirt needs, and then uh, when I'm finished that, if I haven't taken all the, uh, the material from out front by the road where the tractor is, the orange thing sticking up there on the horizon, then I will probably continue stripping topsoil there. I was kind of hoping I could use all that material up front so I can push the topsoil back on and sort of have that done. Either to reseed it or just let the grass naturally grow back, which it does quite readily in this particular soil, and I've done that before. So let's spread this out. Got that little bit there around the culvert and uh, see where we stand.
So that is uh, five more loads. Actually, quite a bit. I guess I didn't anticipate needing that much more. A couple here so I could make a, a softer slope into the field, the grass, and then here just to raise it up so it's a little bit closer to the original grass level. Granted, I am going to have a couple inches of gravel on top of that, but I want to make sure the road is higher than the surrounding field, and I don't want to have to dig much of a ditch, you know, cut in the topsoil over there if I don't need to, but I may... I may have to there with a little high spot there between me and the bulldozer. So let's spread this out and call this section done for the road base. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, there is a little bit of a dip right there. It's sort of a bit of a uh, wave. Um, I'll take that out eventually, but um, it's fine for now. I got this slope nice. It's tracked in. It should be stable. A little bit of handwork here around the outlet. There's actually a fair amount of rocks that I'll dig out and just place here by hand as sort of a, a bank. I think this uh, video is already long enough. I'll probably uh, move the rocks off camera and uh, we'll pick up uh, next time, which would be number eight, I think. So thanks for watching this one. I appreciate it.